hi guys welcome back to frm tutorial in today's video we are going to be looking on budgeting so instead of looking on past paper questions i have decided to give some information on budgeting because you asked for it let's talk about how the home manager helps to make the family money work for it how the family money is used to achieve all the goals that the family has set as it relates to money. When you think about budgeting, I want you to consider the income of the family and the expenses of the family. How is it that the home manager is going to plan, organize, monitor, and control the income of the family so that all the expenses of the family is taken into consideration and all things all things that require money or spending of money expenses are covered including savings for the family for them to achieve goals so that's what budgeting is all about budgeting is the process of planning organizing, monitoring, and controlling future income and expenditure that results in the preparation of a budget. A budget is a plan for future expenses. It is a document or a set of documents that are used during the process of budgeting to record the income and expenditure. So basically, it is a document where you would include information such as how much money the family is earning how much money is being taken home the take-home salary or disposable income referred also to as the net income of the family the money available for the family to spend um, so therefore you would have to be aware of that you'll also have to be aware of what are the expenditure or the various expenses um, for the family for example the utility bills what are the utility bills within the home that must be paid for on a monthly basis or on a weekly basis? Um, food, entertainment, medication, education, savings, right? Whether the saving is for a vacation or the saving is for them to purchase a home or for the children to go to university. Whatever the family is saving towards or whatever the individual is saving towards. So you're planning now, how is it that the money that is available, the income will be used to take care of all of these expenses, these future expenses that you have, whether the expense is referring to a future expense for next month, a year, two year, and this refers now to the various types of goals that you may have. Individuals, organizations, and government, they all prepare budgets. The budget shows how an individual, organization, or the government plans to use its money during a stated period of time. That is, whether it is weekly, monthly, or yearly. As an individual, we can talk about you as students. You may plan for how is it that you're going to be spending your lunch money. What is it that you'll be buying? How much does it cost? Based on the amount of money that you have available, you will have to divide that now so you can get all the things that you need for the day out of your lunch money. And then perhaps you want to save towards the purchase of a cell phone or a textbook. Whatever goal is it that you want, anything that you said to yourself that, okay, I want to have this. And your parent may not be giving you the money to purchase it, so you have to save for it. So you may decide that, okay, out of the money that I have, I am going to spend this on lunch. This is for my fair um, savings. How much money am, gonna, am I going to save out of this amount of money that I get on a weekly basis or on a daily basis? So you too can make a budget. Factors to be considered when preparing a budget. So... Here are some factors that when you're making a budget or when a homemaker is making a budget that they should bear in mind or they should consider. The preparation of a budget is based on the availability of the income to be spent and saved. Income can be obtained from wages or salary together with rent from property, interest on savings, 
profit from a business, dividends on stocks and shares, as well as any other earnings. When preparing a budget, consider the following. The family's net income, their fixed expenses, flexible expenses, savings and investments, the amount of money to be spent on food. I mentioned this earlier, but let us talk about net income. What is net income? Remember now, net income is what one of the factors that you should consider when you are making a budget. All right, so you you can't be making a budget without having the money to cover the expenses. So the net income refers to the amount that is left after all deductions like government taxes, national insurance contributions have been made. Net income, as it pertains to salary, is your take-home pay. That is the amount of money that is available to help the family to meet its various demands. The gross income consists of all the income that is received in the form of money, goods, and services. But you do not get all of that money to take home, right? It includes all of those taxes. It's that money that you earn total with all the taxes that is to be paid, not yet deducted. So the net income is what is taken now, what is taken home um after the deductions have been taken the deductions as i said before your national insurance contribution your government taxes right so it's that money that you take home that you now have to spend or that the family now has to spend to take care of the demands of the family after all the deductions have been removed so of course you know that the gross income is going to be bigger but the net income is going to be smaller so you plan for the net income and not the gross income, all right? Now, for the expenses, you have two different types of expenses. You have fixed expenses and you have flexible expenses. As the names suggest, fixed expenses refers to those which you pay a set amount for the services and goods each month. For example, mortgage or rent installation loans insurance every month the same amount of money you know this amount of money that you're expected to pay each month it doesn't change and so it is referred to as fixed expenses so unless you find a different place to live where the rent is cheaper um, you're going to be paying that amount of money every month flexible expenses refers to those expenses that vary from month to month um, these really depend on how much is it that the family or the individual uses. These are the ones that you can actually save money on. So it means that if you want to save or if you want to include additional expenses, this is where you will get the money from. This is where you will make the adjustments. So the more you use, it's the more you spend. The less you use, it's the less that you will spend. So if you use less, you'll pay less. So if you want to spend less on those expenses, what are you going to do? We're going to use less. So as it relates to our utilities like water, electricity, it means that you're going to conserve on electricity, you're going to conserve on the water so that the bill will come at a smaller amount and so you'll be freeing up money now so that you can use it on another expense that has just come up that you would like to include into the budget. Having said that, flexible expenses refers to our utility bills, food, travel and entertainment, savings, medical expenses. Sometimes medical expenses can be fixed depending on if the person has a specific chronic illness that they have to spend money on like that all the time. Or um, for example, transportation, if it is the same amount of money that they utilize every time. So it depends on the situation. And that is the reason why in reading past paper questions that you will have to read the scenario to hear what is it that the family's circumstances are so that you will know what expenses would be fixed for their family and what expenses will be flexible or var variable. Another factor to consider when it is that you are planning a budget is savings and investment. 
A savings account is a cash reserve for later use, right? Or for an accumulation of wealth. The more money you save, it's the more money that you'll actually have in your account, the more money you'll have to your name. So you're basically accumulating wealth based on the amount of money that you put down for the future. Investments are funds or properties that are purchased solely for the purpose of making a profit. So earlier I mentioned that if it is that the family wants to cut back on their spending, what is it that they'll actually adjust in the budget would be their flexible or variable expenses. And I hope you remember what these expenses that I'm referring to are, what the examples are. So the utilities, the food, travel, entertainment, right? No, it is not only if you want to include additional expenses or to save more that you will actually cut back on the flexible or the variable expenses, but also consider what if the family income decreased? If the family income decreased, it means that you do not have that amount of money to spend on all of these expenses anymore. And so adjustments will have to be made. The only place these adjustments can necessarily be made um, is in the flexible slash variable expenses. All right. So that's where you'd go to. Um, if you're going to be troubling the fixed expense, it means that the family situation would have had to change. It would mean that you're now going to finish paying off that installation installment loan um, that you would have with the furniture store or the appliance store um, so that that money can be freed up. So you don't longer have that to pay. Or you're going to find a different place to rent so that you're going to be paying less money. Or it may be that you're going to be cancelling that insurance, which may not necessarily be a wise move depending on the family's circumstance and the future plans that they may have. Just some additional information here. Um, we would have made reference to them earlier in the video, but here goes. An expenditure is an amount of money that has been spent in order to meet the needs of the family. The disposable income has to be allocated to various uses. This allocation is made during budgeting. So you know how much money is it from the income, from the net income that you're going to be putting towards the various expenses. And over time, you have an idea how much money is it that the light bill may come to? It's not fixed, but you know that on a regular month-to-month -month basis that this is the range in which it comes. Or if you know that you had more family members or you did some construction at home, you know that it's going to come more or you didn't do much or you weren't at home very much. Um, the family wasn't there for that period of time. So yes, you're going to be saving on some money. So you kind of have an idea. However, you're basically going to be allocating the income that you have, that the family have towards these expenses in order to meet them. I want you to remember that the flexible expenses, they do not change. They remain the same on a monthly or a weekly basis. And so you will most definitely know that. So if the rent is for $500, it's going to be like that every month unless it changes. When it does change later on in the future, you will know and you'll make the adjustment. You'll monitor the budget just the same and you'll make those changes. Budgeting helps to plan these expenses. These expenses can be classified as either fixed or flexible. Flexible also refers to as variable expenses. For recap purposes, fixed expenses are set amounts that are usually paid in the same amount during each time period. Mortgage or rent payments, health and life insurance premiums, loan installations, are some examples of fixed expenses. These expenses become due on a set date each month. Flexible or variable expenses are items that comes up regularly in the budget, but they do so in varying amounts and frequency. For example, utilities, food, clothing, and entertainment. Remember, utilities refer to light, water, internet bills, um, cable bills, right? 
um, people can exercise considerable control over some of these flexible expenses because they are flexible they vary the home manager or the money manager can use these to make adjustments to the spending plan which is the budget of course for example he or she can monitor the use of the electrical appliances in the home and take measures to reduce the monthly electricity and telephone bills expenses for occasions such as birthdays graduations christmas and such which comes up now and then and then are sometimes categorized as occasional expenses why make a budget a budget is a financial plan for organized spending and saving it is an estimate of income and expenses it is a system for using income that is available to meet as many goals as possible Money is a rather limited resource that must be allocated to meet the family's needs and wants. So, let's get into the various reasons why we make a budget. The main reason for preparing a budget is to enable an individual or family to live within its income. If the family does not spend the money that they have available to them, and, and their expenses are more than it will lead to stress it will cause the family to have to borrow money or the individual to have to borrow money in order to meet the expenses or the needs of the family the second reason here is budgeting allows you to make choices that will benefit you and your family you have to choose among short-term and long-term goals to decide what is most important Budgeting can help the individual or the family to reach their long-term goals because here you would be including in the budget your plans for savings. So you'll be setting aside money out of the income towards savings to reach the long-term goals such as purchase of a home or for the children education. The next reason for making a budget is Budgeting provides useful financial records. So over a period of time for the various months, this information is there that you can check and compare. You'll see how much money was spent last month, the month before, last year this time. So it provides financial records of the spending. How is it that the income was allocated towards the various expenses? Where did the money go? Right. So it gives that accounting detail budgeting keeps expenditure under control it helps you to avoid wasteful spending patterns and reduces impulsive buying the individual sees clearly how much money is available and where the different money is where the money is allocated towards the different expenses and so you will see that all right all of this adds up to the amount of money that the family is taking home the amount of money that is available for spending so this amount of money is for the rent or for the mortgage this amount of money is towards food this amount of money is for the utilities to clear all of these expenses and meet the family's needs so therefore it will cause the family now to think about do i really need this item here what purpose will this item serve the family is there money for this item and the budget will clearly indicate if the money is available um so it forces the individual or the family to spend money on what is needed because they see clearly what money is available and what the expenses that are to be met and so you will think twice before spending money on something that is not needed basically you'll be wasting the money and so if you waste the money to purchase something that is not needed by the family it means that the money is going to be short in helping to meet the need of something else another expense that you would have budgeted for and finally Budgeting provides you with a vision of your financial status and as such can help to reduce stress and anxiety. Let us examine this question. A family whose monthly income is $5,000 comprises the mother, father and two teenagers. 
The teenagers will soon be entering university. The family hopes to purchase a car to meet their, their transportation needs. Table 1 below represents two monthly budgets, A and B, prepared by the family. Examine the budgets below and answer the questions that follow. Before you can answer the question, you need to spend time to review both budget A and budget B. You also need to review the scenario given so that you can bear the information that is given in mind. The rent, remember, it is a what type of expense? A fixed expense. Therefore, it's going to remain the same. So if you look at both budget A and budget B for the same family, it's going to indicate that their rent is for $1,600. It will not change. It will remain the same and become due the same time every month. Food, realize food in budget A, they allocated $800. In budget B, allocated $700. So that is a flexible or variable expense. Bus or taxi fare, the same $400. Think about why this is so. Utilities. In budget A, utility is $1,200. And in budget B, it is $1,000. Medical expenses, $100 in both budgets. Clothing, $300 in budget A, $100 in budget B. Family vacation, $500. That is a saving right there they're saving for a family vacation and then in budget b they're saving for a home in budget a entertainment is 200 dollars. while in budget b entertainment is not there but education is and education the allocation is 800 dollars. for both of the budgets the total is five thousand dollars remember that the family's monthly income is five thousand dollars so whenever they break up and share or divide that money among all of the expenses it should total back to five thousand dollars because that's the amount of money that you have to spend in order to meet all these needs that the family would have however if you recognize in budget A and budget B, you have some common expenses. Common expenses like rent, food, transportation, utilities, medical expenses, clothing, right? However, family vacation is in budget A and entertainment is in budget A. For budget B, savings for a home and education is in budget B. So, same family a number of common expenses but based on what you're seeing here there are two different um goals that they are trying to save for so let us look at the question or questions state the important family goal that is not catered for in either of the two budgets Hmm. Where are we going to find this information? How are we going to know which goal was not included? Well, you would have to go back to the scenario to get a clue. The family whose monthly income is $5,000 comprises of the mother, father, and two teenagers. The teenagers will soon be entering university. The family hopes to purchase a car to meet their transportation needs. All right, so it says that the family needs to purchase a car. We're going to look at the two budgets. Are you seeing where it is included in any of the budgets? No, it is not there. So the answer is buying a car. That is the family goal that was not included or not catered for in either of the budgets. Number two. Identify the budget that is more suitable for the needs of the family and give three reasons to support your answer. I believe that budget B would be the answer for this and it asks for three reasons. Here are some possible responses to this. Why is budget B the most suitable budget for the needs of the family to be met? 
Firstly, it the scenario did indicate that the teenagers will soon be entering university. The family is paying rent and so if one of the budget did indicate that they would want to save for a home, then that would be a plus. So budget B does contain those two things, saving for the children education and saving for a home. So we could say that budget B includes the savings to help the family realize its goals and things considered as needs for the family. Less money is spent on food, less money is spent on utilities and also clothing. By doing so, it helps the family to allocate more money towards savings towards achieving their goals. Number three, suggest two changes that can be made to the budget you selected in two above in order to achieve all the family goals here you may be thinking what family goals again aren't all the family goals included in budget b already so what other family goal would you want to include remember that you indicated that the goal the goal for purchasing a new car was not included so the budget needs to be adjusted again so as to include that savings right and remember that you can only adjust the flexible expenses in order to add that additional goal that was left off because there is no way you can just add it again because you have to remember that is only five thousand dollars that's the income that you have to spend so you have to use the money available to allocate for the various expenses that the family has you have to make the money work for the family and by doing so you cannot waste the resource you have to cut back on spending you have to conserve you have to limit the amount of money that is spent in other areas and so you avoid impulsive buying and wasteful shopping or wasteful spending here are some suggestions that i have given one since the more immediate goal of the family is a car they could save for that then when it is achieved they can now include the plans for a house the savings for a house number two suggestion they can remove clothing clothing should be on occasions not a monthly expense because they basically once they have clothes they can rewear the clothes or um, or recycle the clothing so it doesn't have to be included on a monthly basis three number three suggestion decrease savings for education number four suggestion conserve on utilities and the fifth suggestion buy food in bulk compare prices shop around buy only what is needed so that the allocation for food can be decreased let us look at another past paper question relating to budget. John is a salesman who lives with his parents. He would like to purchase his first car at the end of the year. His monthly income is $1,500 US. He is expected to contribute $200 US to the home. Table 1 shows his likely yearly payments in United States dollars. Car payment, down payment, 1200 installment, 600 insurance for 12 months, $2,000, maintenance, $3,600. Prepare a monthly budget in United States dollars to show how John should account for the expenses listed in Table 1. Remember now that the table is showing the expenses for the year. How many months make a year? 12, right? And so you're asked to prepare a monthly budget. So what are you going to do? Well, you'll divide 12. You divide all these US amounts, the allocation for the various expenses for the car. You'll divide each of them by 12. And so you'll get what you would have to allocate or what John would have to allocate per month. Right, so for example, down payment one thousand two hundred dollars, you'll divide that by twelve 
and so he will need to put down or allocate $100 out of his monthly earning now to save towards the down payment of the car. For the installment, $600 divided by 12, he will need to put down $50. So you'll draft up another table and this one will be known as the monthly payment for a car. You will rewrite the expenses and you will indicate US dollars and you'll write the calculated amounts for the month. You'll do the same thing for insurance and maintenance. Because, of course, if John is only earning $1,500, there's no way that all of these money would actually be coming. All of these $1,200, $600, all of that combined would actually make sense for him to be budgeting that there was same amount um, with just an income of $1,500 US. Second question, name two important items other than those listed in table one that John should include in his budget. So the items there are all items relating to the car, right? But there are other things that John may need to budget for. So here to get a clue, you go back to the scenario, you reread it. Now, uh, some possible answers here would be um, transportation. He would need to budget for transportation because he is now saving for a car. It is his first car. He doesn't own a car as yet, so he has to take transportation to work. So he would need to include transportation in the budget. He would also need to include the $200 that he has to contribute to the home. He may include clothing. He may include food. You know, his own little food like his lunch. For each item named in D2 above, state one reason why it is important to include it in the budget. I initially gave the response in terms of the reason for including transportation. However, the $200, um, he has to make that contribution towards the home. And so this is just him giving money to his parents, probably towards the payment of utility and whatever other contribution he's making it towards to the household. Um, he has to factor those things in so that it can come out of his monthly income. His income has to be borne in mind, right? Because you have all of these expenses now. You will have the $100, the $50, the $166.67, and the $300 which are all expenses now that you would have calculated for the monthly expenses to all towards the car payment. You would add all of those up, add the $200. You do not know how much for his transportation, but when all of that is said and done and allocations are made towards those, they should be able to add up to the $1,500 that he is earning. Let's examine another budget-related question. Tommy and Sarah Hills have two small children and recently Sarah gave birth to a set of triplets. The family agreed that Sarah will leave her job and remain at home to care for her young family. Table 1 below shows the budget the family used while Sarah was working. The table shows Tommy's salary. It shows Sarah's salary because remember, it says that the table shows the budget the family was using while Sarah was working. What new information were you given? Sarah is now going to be staying home. So if Sarah is going to now stay home, she's going to leave her job. Does she still have an income? Well, no, she doesn't. So therefore... Only Tommy's salary alone will be on the new budget, right? Okay. On the right, you see all of the expenditure, all of the expenses of the family. Rent, savings, food, utilities, daycare fees, clothing, miscellaneous. What else did you notice here? On the left, the total income of the family 
is was four thousand three hundred dollars the expenses also add up to the four thousand three hundred so it shows how the income is allocated towards all of these expenses and it shows that is it is within the income now if we're to keep all of these expenses the same way with the same allocation what do you think will happen mm? remember now that sarah is going to quit her job and so the family will not have $1,500 anymore. It will now only be dependent on Tommy's salary, $2,800. So you can't be coming home now. The family can't be coming home with $2,800. And the expenditure is all, all of $4,300. Where will that additional $1,500 come from in order to supply for all of these needs? Right? So let's look at the questions. State two changes that should be made to the income side of the budget. Answer. Remove Sarah's salary and adjust the total. Number two, state any six changes that should be made to the expenditure side of the budget. Adjust savings, remove daycare fees, remove clothing, adjust food, adjust utilities, and miscellaneous. Give one reason for each of any two of the changes made above now of the six changes that were named you're going to select any two and you're going to give one reason for making the changes for any of the two changes that you have outlined now that sarah is no longer working i believe they cannot save as much now because they're earning less daycare fees need to be removed totally because no Sarah will be staying home with the children so there is no need for payment of daycare fees clothing is not necessary to be included regularly as clothing can be recycled I would believe miscellaneous is not necessary anymore or can be reduced a whole lot because majority or I should probably think that all of the family's expenses are included in this budget and so why include miscellaneous and have it at that amount right the family is also having savings in the budget so miscellaneous can be removed or be reduced drastically thank you for tuning in to this frm tutorial if you found this video helpful please consider subscribing to the channel for more tutorials on family and resource management. Now, good luck on your examinations.